Okay, and here we are back in diodes. Um, so when you look at a diode circuit, the very first thing you want to look at is to, is to see if that diode is reverse or forward bias, um, because that is going to tell you what is going to what is going on with the circuit. Because if your diode is forward biased, it acts like a short, and if your diode is reverse biased, it acts like an open. Now we say like a short and like an open because. Um, we are talking about how it reacts to the flow of current. So a reverse bias diode will stop the flow of current and it will act like an open, although there's not an actual physical um, open in the circuit. And a forward bias diode will act like a short, although it has a voltage drop. So like regular shorts have zero voltage drop, the diode has a certain amount of resistance. It has a set voltage drop, and that resistance varies based on current flow to maintain that voltage drop. So it does have resistance. It only acts like a short and like an open in that it allows or stops current flow. Okay, so um, for this particular one, we can see that our diode is forward biased because the negative portion of our power supply meets the negative portion of our diode. So with our like-to-like, -like, that is a forward bias diode, it is going to push, essentially, the um, electrons in the cathode toward the holes in the anode, and then um, it will fill up the holes and continue on to the positive side of our power supply. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about voltages. So let's look at this first question. We're actually going to do a number of scenario-based questions just to kind of get a feel for how um, calculations and diodes work. So we know that knee and offset voltage is that set voltage for our diode. And if it is a silicone diode, it is 0.7. Now, a nice way to remember it, that it's 0.7 is that silicon has seven letters. So um, hopefully that will help everyone if you're having a hard time remembering. But um, that 0.7 for silicone, at least as far as our course goes, will remain at that value. So diodes typically have set values. That's what makes them so useful in circuits, besides the fact that they allow current only in one direction. Um, and so uh, they don't vary with current flow. You find that voltage drop is consistent based on the type of diode. All right, now, so if the diode has a 0.7 voltage drop, what is total current? Well, because the diode maintains its set voltage regardless of current, then we are not going to use the voltage of the diode to determine current. So what we do is we take 5 and we subtract 0.7, that is the diode's voltage drop, and we get a total voltage for our circuit of 4.3 that remains. So to figure total current, we're going to take that remaining 4.3 and divide it by 12. And that gives us 0.36 amps. So then what is the voltage on R1? Well, pretty simple. If the voltage on D1 is 0.7, then the voltage on R1 has to be 4.3, because 4.3 plus 7 gives us 5 volts, which is our applied voltage. Okay. So let's take a look at this scenario. Now in this one, we see our diode is reverse bias. So it is acting like an open, right? We have our negative part of our power supply um, reaching the positive portion of our diode first. So what is the voltage for D1 if it is a germanium diode? Well, it's acting like an open, so it really doesn't matter what kind of diode it is in this scenario because it has applied voltage. We see applied voltage across our open, and so that would be 5 volts. In this case, because it is reverse bias, the, bi the voltage on D1 would be 5 volts. Well, that means that if it's reverse bias, that current is 0, and the voltage on R1 has to be 0 because all of our voltage is on D1. So D1 plus R1 equals our applied voltage, and if one of them has all the voltage, the other one must have none. Okay, and that is pretty simple. A single diode and a single resistor 
in a very basic DC configuration. We're going to look um, in the next video at having multiple resistors on the circuit, but I think you're going to probably find that pretty easy.